morning, everyone. How are you today? Um, I, feel, I feel more ministerial today. I have a, actually a sweater and a shirt on. I apologize for the, all the days that I do these tapings with a hoodie on, but uh, if I had my way, if I just had my way, if it was appropriate, I would wear a hoodie every day for the rest of my life with some jeans, and that would be that, and some nice, comfortable sneakers. But can't do that all the time. It's not that appropriate. So uh, here I am trying to like look more like whatever. So we learned yesterday that Peter is telling us in 2 Peter chapter 1, you begin with faith in Christ, but as a new believer or as any believer, you got to keep growing and adding on these qualities that God will make possible by his grace, but you got to pay attention and want it and trust God and ask God for it. So let's review a little bit. Add to your faith goodness, to goodness knowledge. Add to knowledge self-control. That's what we control, talked about yesterday. And to self-control perseverance. By the way, self-control. I once counseled someone, we were talking about credit cards. You need self-control with those. Are they a good thing? Are they a convenience? Yeah. Then can they get you in a lot of trouble? Oh, yeah. What's the difference? Self-control. Self-control. I once counseled someone who had zero self-control, got every credit card known to man. Forget Amex, Visa, MasterCard, uh, whatever. Every card. Cards I never heard of. They got them. They qualified, they got them. And they ended up thousands and thousands of dollars in debt spread out over like seven credit cards. And every month to keep afloat, they would be paying $25, whatever the minimum was. But the interest was gouging them. So they were, they were going nowhere. Why? Lack of self-control. That's for all of us. Haven't you ever heard the, Holy, uh, heard the Holy Spirit or your conscience say to you in a conversation, don't join into that one. That is not a good conversation. Just silencio. But there's something in us just, yeah, well, you know what my opinion about her is. So now, add to your self-control perseverance. In my New Testament and 26 translations, it says, and add to temperance or self-control Patience or endurance, steadfastness, fortitude, New American Standard Bible, perseverance, Williams translation, patient endurance, steadfastness, Moffat, and Rotherham, which is a very literal translation, endurance. So perseverance, what's that mean? The mature Christian has to be growing in perseverance. What's that mean? Keep on going. Keep on trucking. Don't panic. Don't give up. Circumstances aren't good. Situation has gone from bad to worse. But you don't panic. You don't run. You don't stop believing. You don't start screaming and lose your temper. You endure. Patience. Endurance. Steadfastness. You get it? And a lot of us are good with the Lord and in our walk, as long as the sun is shining. But let a storm come, and we're like, Wah! Remember the disciples in the boat with Jesus, and they got in the boat, everything was good, he fell asleep. Then a storm came. They were doing good, so he's sleeping. He's in the boat with us. But then the storm, the waves coming over the side of the boat. Then they totally panicked. They woke him up. Lord, we're going to die. So imagine this. You're in a boat with Jesus, but you're all going to sink and die. Mm, maybe not. So the fear, they ran out of faith. Their faith didn't endure. They couldn't keep at it, trusting. Sometimes we're worn down by the enemy. You know, the enemy works against our endurance. He wants to wear us down, not by a punch. You know, spiritual warfare is not just pop, pop. It's just pressing, pressure, pressure. And against the pressure, you have to exert muscles. And guess what? You get fatigued. 
But like the sign said in the Naval Academy locker room where I was playing hoops at Annapolis, fatigue makes cowards of us all. Spiritual fatigue, too. You, make, you become a coward. You don't stand up for Christ. You lose your joy, your peace, because you haven't patiently endured. Notice that William's translation, which is a very excellent one, has patient endurance. So the endurance that God wants to work in us is not this kind of endurance. Oh, all right, I'll hold on. No, it's a sweet endurance. It's keeping a kind spirit, a joy while you're enduring. Oh, do we need that? Do I need that? Do we need that from the Lord? Do we need the Holy Spirit to give us love, joy, peace, patience? We need patience from the Holy Spirit. But when he gives it, it's not the stoicism of all right, I won't run, and I won't get mad at her, but... And then when you're around people, like, dude, what's wrong? I'm enduring. Oh, I'm enduring. No. It's like, it's not pleasant, but the Lord is good. I'm going to get through this. So how are you doing today? How can I help you? No, but you're the one going through something. Yeah, but it doesn't paralyze me. I'm not in a pity party. I'm enduring with patient endurance. Patient with circumstances and patience with people. There's two kinds of stresses, aren't there? There's bad situations, financial stress, all that. And then there's people you have to deal with, that you work with, or an in-law, or a whatever. Oh, the way they act, the way they talk. It's like, oh, I want to scream. Right? But you can't. God's working in us. We can't be impatient with people or circumstances. Oh, God died and he doesn't care about me. No, come on, come on. Let's endure. He that endures to the end shall be saved. That's a good verse. Endurance. It's possible through God's grace, not you and I tough, you know, getting a stiff upper lip and we're going to tough it out. No, that'll make us edgy. Lord, give us today the endurance we need, the sweet patience, patient endurance, that whatever befalls us today, we're going to keep our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.